Theatre Presents Madhouse Chapter 1 At only 11 years old, Lucas would live through all the horrors the human being is capable of. He waved goodbye to his friends as he got off the school bus. The evening air brushed at his cheeks and ruffled his brown hair. He walked a couple of blocks to the porch of his house. The smell of freshly cut lawn filling his lungs. The flowers that decorated the entrance shone thanks to the summer warmth. Lucas decided not to enter through the main door. He liked challenges. From time to time, especially when he was bored, he would find ways to enter without being seen, like a sneaky cat that came and went as he wished. He used to play hide-and-seek with his father and friends all the time. He was always the best. Not only because he knew the best places to hide, but also because he changed his spots frequently. However, these those days were gradually falling behind. Especially now he was in his last days of primary school. By the end of summer he would start middle school, so he had to take advantage of what little childhood he had left. He went around the house into the backyard and found the kitchen door hung wide open. Too easy, he told himself. Besides, he risked bumping into someone. He moved on, finding a window to the living room. He tossed the trash can next to him aside, climbed on top of it and peeked inside. Nobody home. Perfect. Lucas had, had to enter slowly to make sure not to fall headlong onto the floor. He put both hands on the rug and little by little he introduced the rest of his body to the living room. Mission accomplished. He heard voices coming from the kitchen. I was glad he didn't, hadn't gone through there. Lucas slid like a shadow to the source of the noise, hoping to jump out and scare the hell out of his parents. He leaned back against the wall, moving toward the dining room door. There was something strange in their voices. They sounded angry, as if they wanted to scream, but they spoke in whispers instead. He could barely catch snippets of the conversation. What are we going to do with him? His mother asked, Mary asked, What do you mean? replied Tom, his father. We'll tell him. Not yet. I don't think he's ready. ready. I'm not ready. Don't care. If you're not ready, he's my son. Both yours and mine? Well, oh, let's not go there, please. Not now. Lucas came closer. Was he see talking about him? But what was it they couldn't tell him? I can't believe you're throwing in the towel so easily, his dad said. After all these years and all that shit we've been through. It's not like we haven't tried, Tom. We've been trying for years, but I'm afraid it's not working. I know, I know, but still, let me ask you a question. I want you to be honest as possible. Are you happy? Tom remained silent for a moment before answering. Of course, let me rephrase the question. Are you happy with me? This time his father did not answer. Lucas understood what they were talking about. He left his hiding place, trying to hold back the tears. No, he shouted at the top of his lungs, which made his parents jolt in surprise. You can't slip up. We're all a family. Mary put her hand on her chest and wide, eye, wide eyes, approached him carefully, as if she was afraid of touching him. Lucas, honey, let me explain. No, there's nothing to explain. Lucas stepped back, moving further away from his mother. Tom just stood there with his arms crossed. Nothing to say. He surely knew there was nothing he could say that would calm Lucas at that moment. After all, the boy's world was falling apart. He had neither uncles nor cousins. He saw his grandparents a couple of times a year. But he'd always been the only child. The only company apart from his friends he used to be his pets, which he had no longer had. The only family he had were his mum and dad. The pillars they kept the house together. The pillars that kept the house together and happy, they were, ne- were leaving each other. Lucas had heard the horror stories from his friends. His parents had divorced. Typically, they would live with their mothers for a week. Their dads ended up moving to some small, shabby apartment, and he could be visited on weekends. Lucas didn't want any of that. Instead, he wanted to greet them both every day. 
to dine together at the table and watch TV with him. Lucas, this time it was his father holding out his hand. The boy turned and ran straight to his room. He slammed the door behind him and threw himself into the bed. Onto the bed. He faced directly onto the pillow. He sniffed his snot sobs without numbing for how long. Once his eyes had dried, he set up his bed. Lucas had reached his parents, had to teach his parents a lesson. If he were to run away, they would realise how much they loved him. They would not be a family unless they were together, all of them. Only then would Lucas return and everybody would be happy again. The boy stared motionless at the wall for hours. He waited for night to set his plan into motion. Madhouse, Chapter 2 You know, it was nothing to do with you, right? Mary asked in a soft voice that, co- what, that caressed his ears. It was a tone she used when she was apologising for something. Lucas didn't answer. He was lying down with his gaze fixed on the wall. She sat on the edge of the bed and stroked his hair. It's, it's a grown-up thing. You, your dad and I still love each other. We love you too. It's just... It's complicated. Some people are not meant to be together. Then why did you get married? Because we loved each other. We still do, but sometimes that's not enough to maintain a relationship. It's like a plant or a pet. You can love it very much, but you don't. But if you don't take care of it, you risk losing it. That sounds stupid. Maybe it is, but that's how it works. I'm never going to marry, said the boy after a pause. Mary felt a twinge in her chest. Oh, boy, don't say that. You'll surely find a good woman. And you'll fall in love with her with and raise a happy family together. And then she divorced me, and we were sad and alone. Mary let her sigh. Though Lucas was a bright boy, he was still too young to understand certain things. Besides, he's obviously hurt. Seeing his parents fighting all the time can be toxic to a growing child. In contrast, being divorced didn't sound so bad. If they could get along and share custody, she's sure it was the best route for everyone. Yet she knew it would take a long time for him to understand. Maybe years. Sweetie, I know you feel bad now, but I promise it was... It, it's not the end of the world. We'll still be happy, all three of us. Things will be different from now on. But it's for the best. Lucas remained silent. Mary leaned over to him. A little to see him and notice he had his eyes closed. He was obviously pretending to be asleep. So he would stop the conversation. She knew him like the back of her hand. She finished chucking at him and kissed him on the forehead. I love you, my prince, she said as she got out from the bed. Mary hesitated for a second, hoping to hear. I love you too, my queen. He replied with every night. Only the silence we answered. She crossed the room, put her hand on the knob, ready to close the door behind her, and her fingers instinctively went to the light switch. Mum! Ray jumped and turned. A hint of hope made her raise her jaw and listen to what he had to say. Yes, darling. Remember not to turn off the lights. Lucas said he settled between the sheets. Oh, all oh, oh, right. She jerked her hand away from the switch as if it were hot, gave a timid smile to her son. Sweet dreams, said Mary. This time she didn't wait for him to respond. You've been listening to a reading of Madhouse by Mocha Estrad. Available on Amazon Rate Amazon Marketplace. It has 20 chapters and it offers you a free book called Shifter. So look out and review this fantastic book as mentioned on Horror Theatre.